according to this page. So is y equals to cube root of x. So it's a cube root. So I'm trying to find the cube root function. So it's very, very similar to square root. Okay, very, very similar to square root. So the simplest cube root has a function y equals to cube root x. Okay, what's the difference between cube root and square root x? Cube root, there's no endpoints. You can continue left hand side, continue right hand side. Okay, but there's a point of inflection in the middle. Uh, I need to use that. Okay, that's a point like, it's actually not a point of inflection if you learn further. Okay, if you, you know, you learn next year methods, you will find out it's not actually called a point of inflection. But there's a no, I don't know which word I can describe it. You just say you have a point which looks special here. Okay, you have a point that looks special here. Let's, it's similar to a point of inflection. So let's call, call this a point of inflection. What's the difference between a point of inflection and this point? When you sketch the cube, uh, what is it called? The x to the power of 3. When you sketch x to the power of 3, the graph looks like this. Okay, the graph looks like this. And now what's the cube root function's graph looks like? Okay, the graph looks like this. Shh. At the back, please be quiet. So, for x to the power 3, this is called a point of inflection. It's a really flat point. Okay, it's flat. It's horizontal, this point. But think about cube root. It's actually turn this graph like about 90 degrees. Okay, turn the graph 90 degrees. Put it lie down. And then this point is a vertical point, actually. Okay, that's a really a vertical point. They look similar, but they're not exactly the same. This one is called a stationary point of inflection. But this is actually not called that a stationary point of, point of inflection. But to our convenience, let's just call that a point of inflection. So that's why I make this word here. I call it point of inflection because it looks similar. Okay, I just need to know that looks similar, but not exactly the same. Okay, and for square root function, I only have part of the graph, okay, half of this graph. But for cube root function, because you can put any value into the cube root, cube root 1 equals to 1. Cube root negative 1, that equals to negative 1. You can put both negative and positive number under the cube root. So that's why I have both part of the graph, okay, positive and negative. Okay, we can take all the domain. Domain is R. Our domain is R. Our range is R. We can take all the value of domain, all the range of the domain. So remember, that's for all the cube root. That's for all the cube root. Okay, that's for all the cube root function. So every cube root function will have domain R and range R. Okay, every cube root function will have domain R and range R. And change something here. That's change to a cube. I, I forgot to change it. That's a cube root. So a general equation for a cube root graph is fx equals to a cube root and x minus h plus k. What do you realize? That exactly looks the same as the square root function, unless we have a cube root instead of a square root. Okay, can you see that? The general function looks the same. They look the same. So we will use similar way to sketch it. We will use similar way to sketch it. But this one is good because it's much easier compa compared to square root function. Square root function has four basic shapes. That way, that way, that way, and that way. You will choose one out of four. But for cube root function, you only have two. Okay, you only have two basic graphs. You only have two basic graphs. So let's think about... I will take off all of these. Let's think about what is a y equals to cube root negative x. What that looks like. What that looks like. You have the negative x in the cube root. You will be reflect by the y x axis by transformation, right? Reflect by the y x axis. So the graph will look like okay. Original graph is on the top. Reflect by the y x axis. 
and the graph looks like this. Okay, how about if you have a negative outside but still positive inside? Still positive inside. Outside that will be reflected by the x-axis. Okay, think about re this original graph. Okay, the top graph reflect by the x-axis. Okay, that way and that way. Okay, reflect by the x-axis. So what do you realize? What do you realize? They looks the same. Okay, they looks the same. See the bottom two? <coughs> they looks the same. No matter you have the negative inside or outside, they will be the same graph. I'm just my sketching is not good, so they should look exactly the same. Okay, they should be the same graph. So, which means if you have any A or N to be negative, the graph will only look like this. Okay, you only only one shape of the graph will look like this. How about you have both negative? You have both negative. Okay. Go to the original one. If both negative, I will reflect by the x x like x axis first. So reflect by the x axis that looks like that, and then reflect by the y x axis. Okay, reflect by the y x axis. I use a black one to sketch. The blue one reflect by the y x axis. We'll go back to this one. Okay, back to the original one. If both negative, if both negative. If both negative, I will have original graph. I will have original graph. So what you can talk about this, like how what you can say about this function, cube root function. If you have a and n both positive or both negative, that graph will be an increasing function. Okay, increasing. If you have a function, you have a cube root function. A or N, one of that to be positive and one of that to be negative, then your graph will be a decreasing graph. Your graph will be a decreasing graph. Okay, that graph will look like this. Okay, so that's what A and N do. Okay, that is what A and N do. A and N, we finish that. And what H and K do? H and K will give you the point of inflection for the cube root H and K. Okay, that's the middle point. That's the middle point, H and K. That will give you the middle point. Because think about the graph move to the right, move to the top, the middle point will keep moving with that. So H and K will be the point of inflection. Okay, point of inflection. So that's easy. So one step one, find point of inflection. Second, find the shape. There will only be two shapes. One looks like that, and the other one looks like that. Okay? Do not sketch your graph like this. Do not sketch your graph like this. That's a cubic function. Okay? That's not a cube root function. Your cube root function will be flat. Flat, okay, both end to be flat, not going really, really quick. So you cannot have this. You cannot have this. Be aware of this shape, okay, flat and flat. It's still increasing. It will, fall, like, finally will tend to infinity, but very, very slow. Very, very slow. Okay, let's sketch this. Let's sketch this. Okay, y equals two. Two. I need to x to be single out, so it's two plus two x plus two. So I don't want x plus two. Let's make an x minus negative two, because I want minus minus h, and then plus negative three. So a equals to one, 
n equals to 2, h equals to negative 2, k equals to negative 3. And the shape of this graph, because they are both positive, the shape of the graph will be this. Okay, that will be the shape of the graph. Okay, that will be the shape of the graph. So let's sketch it. Let's sketch it. Have negative two and negative three. Say negative two and negative three is here. And then the graph will look like that and that. So there will be okay this and this. So there will be x, y intercept. There will be x, y intercept. So I'm not going to sketch it. So let's find x, y intercept first. When x equals to 0, y will equals to that minus 3. That minus 3. So can you see this value is in between that and that. So it's in between 1 and 2. Okay, that value is in between 1 and 2. And then you minus 3. And then you minus 3. So 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Minus 3 is minus 1. So it's in between minus 2 and minus 1. Okay, that value is in between minus 2 and minus 1. So minus 1 is, he minus one is here, minus 2 is here. So in between that. So let's find the value in between that, say here. Okay, let's say that point is root cube root four minus three. Okay, I will take this off because I don't have enough space. Say when y equals to zero, that must equals to three. 2x plus 4 will equal to cube, cube both sides, okay? Cube both sides. So 9, 27. That's a 27. 2x equals to a 23. x equals to 11.5. x equals to 11.5. Okay. If you really want to sketch it, 11.5 is here. Okay, by scale, 11.5 is here, really far that way. So, okay, that is the. X and Y. Okay, that's the X and Y. Then you need to label this point. That point is 23 over 2 or 11.5. Uh, is that 11? Yes, 11.5 comma 0. And this value is cube root 4 minus 3, uh, 0, 0 in the front. Zero minus three. And then you have this point, which is negative two and negative three. Negative two and negative three. So domain is R and range is R. Don't need to think about that even. So for cube root function, domain and range is always R. Okay, domain and range is always R. Next one. Say so next one, I'll say that is negative a half x minus 1 plus 1, h equals to 1, k equals to 1, and a equals to negative a half, n equals to 1. So 1 negative. 1 negative. So it's a decreasing function. So the graph will look like this. That will be a decreasing function. It will look like this. 
so there always there will always be an x intercept and a y intercept you need to don't need to worry about that you will finally touch x in the x axis or y axis so let's just try to find x y intercept first so <coughs> when x equals to zero y equals to one minus a half negative one um not negative one a half three negative one here so you have a negative one so it's y equals to one plus a half because a half times negative one is positive a half so y equals to three on two so zero three on two is the y intercept okay let's go here when y equals to zero, when y equals to zero, one equals to that times two on both sides, you will have this. Cube both sides, you have eight equals to x minus one. So we have x equals to nine. So nine zero will be the x intercept. Nine zero will be the x intercept. So nine zero and zero 1.5 that h and k is 1, 1, 1, 1 is the point of inflection. So let's sketch this. Okay. 9 is here. And then 0, 1.5. which is here and you have one and one to be the point of inflection so one and one is here okay this black not black this blue point is the point of inflection and remember the shape of your graph okay remember the shape of your graph I'll sketch it correctly. I will. So let's say one and one is here. Okay. So the graph will be a decreasing function. So it looks like this. So this point is nine zero. This point is one comma one. That point is zero comma. The scale may be not very correct, but the shape will be the will be the correct shape. Okay, the shape will be the correct shape. Okay. Here, point of inflection, and go down. Have this point, this point, and this point labeled. <coughs> and domain is R, range is R. Okay, domain and range both R. Domain and range both R. Okay, next one. I'll just worry about the shape first and then I will come back to find out the xy intercept because the bottom two is not very easy to find xy intercept. The value is not very good. So first still let's make y equals to minus that negative three x minus two out of three plus one. So First, h and k, h is 2 on 3, which is here, and 1 is here. So this point is the point of inflection. And you have 
outside negative and inside negative so that will be a normal increasing function both negative give you a normal shape of the graph so you'll be here okay the problem now is do I attach by this way or by this way okay both one can be correct have a positive x-intercept or a negative x-intercept so let's find let's find y-intercept first let's find y-intercept first let's make y equals to make uh, y equals to zero let's make y equals to zero so one should equals to this so the inside should give you one minus one should equals to that x should give you a third so a third should be the x-intercept okay a third should be the x-intercept so where is a third a third is here okay here is a third therefore your graph will pass through this point and this point okay that will be the graph you need to label here that's the point of inflection and you need to label this point which is a third comma zero and you have another point you don't know what is that so it's the y-intercept so to look at y-intercept you make when x equals to zero y equals to one minus cube root two okay cube root two and that's it you can't simplify that further so this will be zero comma one minus cube root two and domain is r range is r without thinking okay domain and range both are Last one. Y equals to cube root minus four x minus a half plus three. A equals to one, n equals to minus four, h equals to a half, k equals to three. A half and three will be a half and three will be the point of inflection. Okay, it's here. And the graph is a decreasing function because you have one negative. You only have one negative. The outside is positive. So it will be a decreasing function. So if that's the case, you will have your graph look like this. Okay? That's the shape of the graph. The scale might be not very correct, but I'm pretty sure the shape will look like this. And then you have this point of inflection, which equals to a half comma three. And you want to work out this point, and you want to work out this point x intercept and y, y intercept so you will say when x equals to 0 y will equals to 3 plus cube root 2 okay so that's this green value which is 0 comma 3 plus cube root 2 and you make when y equals to 0 so that is minus 3 must be equals to this and then cube both side you have the negative 27 equals to 2 minus 4x so 4x will equals to 29 okay move the 4x to the left 27 to the right then x equals to 29 over 4 so this is 29 over 4 comma 0 and same, you have domain is R and range is R. Okay, domain is R and range is R.